What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing great. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Line 6 Helix native software. We're going to do a quick rundown. We're going to cover all the essential features that you need to know to be able to start making sounds. So if you're new to this software, hopefully this video will be a good primer for you and get you up and running. I'm going to try to keep this video brief, but you all know how much I like to talk. Okay, so once you have Helix native installed on your computer, you can go ahead and open up your DAW. I'm going to be using Ableton Live. I did have to activate audio units to be visible in my settings in order to see Helix Native. Once it's there, you can just click, drag. I'm gonna drop it right on an audio track. My guitar is going into an audio interface uh, and that audio interface is just feeding straight into this particular audio track. Okay, here it is. You should end up seeing something similar to this when you first load it up, All right there. Awesome, so at the top here, this is our signal chain. All these different squares, these all represent effects. This is an amp model. Down here, this window, this is our edit window. So whatever effect block is currently selected, we're gonna see the parameters for that particular effect. These are just sliders. You just move these things around, set them to where you want them. Then this window here, this is where all of our effects live that we can choose from so you know you can just like click an effect block and um, you can pick different effects you can swap effects around then here on the left side this these are all of uh, the pre-installed presets that are available and these presets they sound really good i've used like the hd 500x for a long time and i've, I've used some of the other pod hds and you know some of the the pre-installed presets are a little over the top they're a little overproduced and they're not really the most usable but these presets they're really good you can just jump right in pull up a preset and with a couple tweaks you're, you're pretty much good to go so right now the first preset is pulled up you can see the title of it here us double normal it coincides with this highlighted one here and i should be able to hear some audio let me make sure i'm recording we go. Sounds awesome. That's a really nice Fender tone. And what you could do at this point, you could just go through and make whatever tweaks you need to do. You can maybe turn the drive down on the amp, adjust some of the EQ settings tweak like the, the reverb, you know, really anything. Just go through, make the preset how you want it. And once you're there, if you want to like give it a new name, you could do that. Just click the name once, it'll highlight it, and you can type a new name in. Then come here to the circle with the three dots, click that, and you have a couple different save options. You can either do save to disk, or it'll save it to your computer, or you can do save to library and this is gonna save it to the set list. So if you just hit okay, it'll just overwrite the preset in the current slot, or you could select a different slot to, to overwrite and pick a different set list, whatever you need to do. Hit okay, and it'll save it. If it's your first time using the software, I recommend just going through some of these presets, seeing what sounds good, and um, you know, start with something that, that works and then customize it to make it how you want it. But if you want to create a preset like from scratch, uh, there's a couple of ways you could do it. One, you could just start with one of these presets. And if you hover over um, these effect blocks, you can see how you get a power button and an X up here. The power button enables or bypasses the effects. It's kind of like clicking a, a foot switch. And the X will make the effect disappear, it takes it out of the chain altogether. So maybe you really like an amp model, you like the way it's all set up, but you don't like the effects in the preset. You could just go through, you could X out all these preset, all these effects, and then you could go in and add in new effects. But if you wanna to start totally from scratch, what you can do here, come up to the set list dropdown. Set list one and two are probably gonna be full of pre-made presets, but the user set list should be open. So just select one of these. There you go, it changes over and just full of new presets. So just double click one of these and we can see 
we're starting from scratch. So what you can do, hover your mouse over this top signal chain line and you'll see little squares appear. These are all of the available places that we can add effects. These are different effect blocks. So, you know, let's build a preset. So the first thing we'll do is we'll throw it on an amp. So I'll probably throw my amp here. I click where I want to put it. So now that square is stuck there. And I need to make sure that I'm in this edit tab. If you get stuck in this automation thing, you probably won't see anything. So come over here to edit, go down to amp and cab, and then just pick what you want. I'm just gonna go with this Brit J45 bright channel, like a Marshall super lead. And then I could just build the rest of the preset from here. So I'll just uh, do that quick. We'll cue a little time lapse. Here we go. Okay, so I've thrown a bunch of effects onto this signal chain. And really all you do is just play and just tweak the effects as you need them. Again, just click whichever effect you want to adjust and come down here to this edit window and just move the sliders however you want them. This editing uh, window up here is like really flexible, super dynamic. Everything's like really modular. So if you want to move effects around, you can totally do that. You can move them to like open effect blocks and you can plop them there. If you move the move a block over a pre-existing one, it'll just kind of push, push it out of the way and make a room. You can just drop your effect down. Something to note, some effects are only mono um, and some of them can be stereo. So for instance, if I want this delay, delay pedal to be stereo, I can select it and here's all the options but at, at, above them if you look it says mono so if i click this drop down i can choose stereo and now it's going to show me all the stereo options and i can choose uh, one that's available you'll notice that some of these are grayed out if it's grayed out it means that it's unavailable and it's probably unavailable because there isn't enough processing power to uh to run that particular effect. Some effects use more processing power than others. It just kind of depends. We'll talk a little bit more about this a little later. Now, something to keep in mind, stereo effects will only be stereo if they're not followed by a mono effect. So for example, an amp model is a mono effect. So if this delay pedal that's stereo was in front of my amp model, as my guitar signal passes through, this delay is gonna be turned into a mono signal as it passes through this mono amp block. Okay, so if you want effects to be stereo, make sure that they come after all of your mono effects. So once you get your preset laid out how you want it, make sure that you save your preset before you go to a different preset or close out of this. So come up here, click once, uh, Give your preset a name. Awesome. Preset, hit enter. It's not saved yet. Make sure you go to this three dots, save to library, and make sure that you save it. And then there it is. And now it's saved. I can draw it up anytime that I need. Okay, so we've only been adding effects to this top signal chain. So what's the point of having the bottom signal chain? Now this was like really confusing to me at first. I was, when I first was messing with Helix Native, I was thinking like, this was some sort of like, this was the left channel and then this was the right channel. I, I didn't really understand what was happening. But both of these signal paths are independent of each other and they are both stereo. So this top line has its own left, right output and the bottom line has its own left right output. So this allows us to do some like really crazy routing things, things that are a little more advanced than we're gonna talk about in this video. But if you wanted to enable the second signal chain, if you click the input block where it says none, come down here, change the input to host. Now it's gonna accept audio from the DAW. So currently how this is set up, both of these signal chains will accept my guitar audio. 
and my guitar audio will run through both both of the chains in parallel with each other. But that's probably for a later video. So for now, I'm gonna keep the host for none on the second signal chain, but I will show you one trick. If I come up here to the output block on the first signal chain, and I change the output from host to 2A, you can see how this changes to an arrow, and then another arrow appears here. This is symbolizing this top signal chain my guitar comes in here, goes through all of these effects, and then is sent down and fed into the second signal chain, runs through this whole chain, and then is sent out back to Ableton where it's pumped out into my headphones, speakers, whatever. So essentially what we've done is we've connected both of these signal chains into one really long signal chain. There's a couple benefits to this. One is now we can add in twice as many effects in one signal chain but we also get twice as much processing power if i select my delay pedal remember how some of these stereo options weren't available because we were maxing out the processing power for this top line well if we connect the top line with the bottom line we can then move some of these effects we can offload them to the other signal chain so i'm going to drop my delay and my reverb I'm going to X out these duplicates. And now watch what happens. If I select my delay, look at that. All the stereo options are available to me. If I go to the reverb, all the stereo reverbs are available to me now. That's because the delay and reverb, they're drawing processing power from the second signal chain. So if you create one really long signal chain, you can then space effects out between the two chains and leverage um, the processing power. I have a, a video that talks a little bit more about this, um, where I, I do this a similar thing like this on the Helix. I'll put a link for it above. Okay, so we could probably take a breath right now. That was a pretty deep dive um, for a beginner video, but I feel like it's really important to understand how these two signal paths are set up and how they interact with one another. I think coming at this program, when I was a beginner, I didn't really understand that and it was kind of confusing. Something else that's gonna be really important to understand is hardware compatibility. If I go down here to this gear icon, it's gonna bring up the preferences and I can go to this hardware compatibility tab. Now the first option says current hardware compatibility mode and it's set for Helix. If I click the drop down, I can see options like Helix, HX effects, HX stop. What's going on here is Line 6 is giving us the ability to um, have like a sharing thing where, where we can take a we can make a preset in Helix native and then load it onto a Line 6 device or we could take a preset from our device and put it into Helix native. And so we can select these different compatibility modes so that we don't really run into any like issues. Because if you create an effect or a preset that's designed for the Helix and you try to load it onto a stomp, it's probably not gonna work. You're gonna have an error. If you're using a stomp, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using the stomp compatibility mode. And so let, let's do just that. I'm gonna close out of this. Let's save this preset just how it is. Get something over the right. I'm gonna double click a new preset. So let's just start blank. So keep in mind, Right now we're in Helix mode. We have two signal paths available. Let's go back to hardware compatibility. Let's select HX stomp. Let's give us a little warning. All right, so now we're in stomp mode and take a look. Now there's only one signal chain available to us and there's actually less um, effect blocks available on that path because that's, that's how it is on the stomp. The stop only has one signal path that we can throw effects on and only has six blocks available. So if I make a preset in stop mode, I should theoretically be able to load it onto a stop, no problem. So if you're someone who you wanna be able to kind of share presets between your Line 6 device and Helix native, then hardware compatibility is gonna be really important to you. If you have no interest in doing that and you're just using the plugin just as a producer tool, you can come in here and you can turn it off. And what that does is it takes off all those restrictions and it gives you uh, pretty much full capability to, 
to use as many effects as will fit in the signal chain or your computer can handle. Okay, just a couple more things. Uh, at the top here, there are snapshots. If you're familiar with snapshots, like on a Helix or a Stomp, uh, same deal. Here, I have a video where I go over snapshots on a Helix in depth. Put a link at the top, you can go check that out if you'd like. There's an undo and redo button, super handy, like really useful. Again, coming from the Pod HD edit software, which doesn't have undo feature, this is really nice. Over here on the far right, we can set a uh, tempo. If we click the clock, we can tell it to uh, sync the tempo per snapshot, per preset, or we can have it just sync to uh, whatever the tempo is in our DAW. Okay guys, there you go. There's your quick and dirty rundown of the Helix Native plugin. Hopefully this uh, was a good starting point for you and hoping I didn't muddle things up. If you have any questions about how to do things, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you have any projects where you've used the Helix Native plugin, I'd be interested in hearing that. You can kind of give me a shout out or a message on my Instagram, john.elliot. Look forward to hearing from you there. If you found this video helpful at all in any way, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, have a great week. See you later.